Member Park and some of the concerns of the citizenry. It's a tough situation, and you know the pool was 50 years old, so it's mm -hmm. outlived its life expectancy, and uh, now mm -hmm. we need to move on. So figure out the best plan of attack and go forward. As far as two million war memorial, I, I was around all those years. It was the, back in the uh, mid 90s when we closed war memorial for three years because we couldn't maintain the quality of uh, water quality. Mm -hmm. uh, the city and county each put a half a million dollars in to have that pool rebuilt. So it was a million dollar project back in, uh, it reopened in 1998. So other than that, most of War Memorial has been raised through the Labor Day breakfast and grants and uh, do donations to the park over the years and matching grants. That's built most of the facilities in there. So. Yeah, uh, I think it's important to, uh, to mention uh, in Jim Klein's uh, report there, uh, he, he, he mentioned two words uh, that I think need a little bit of elaboration. Uh, he mentioned Shawnee and Salengo. Uh, and I think not probably not every one of our uh, listeners and viewers realize that's in Charleston. It's uh, Shawnee Park in Charleston that uh, uh, Commissioner Ben Salengo did take the lead in developing, and it's a really nice place. And, and Jim is right that some of the sources of funding they used then are not available now. So uh, uh, I, I would think we'll have to get a little bit more creative. Uh, but uh, I, I, I think it was important to mention to the listeners that that's, that's something down in Charleston he was talking about. Let's uh, stay on the theme of water, Steve. We had Jim Uletta in studio yesterday. Uh, I issued a plea, basically, for people to stop outdoor right. watering at this time because uh, we don't want to get into crisis mode with the water supply. Uh, is there a plan right now by the county commission to address any water issues? Fortunately, there's some rain on the way this week, it appears. Well, hopefully, uh, yeah. But if not, sure. what are some of your plans? Well, uh, as Jim mentioned, the city and the county have a, an agreement on the water use from Big Springs, okay? And uh, we have to pay for a minimum of a quarter of a million gallons a day. We're currently using a half a million a day. So there's another half a million gallons of water available a day from Big Springs alone to address the south end in particular. So I feel pretty confident that'll take care of it. I have had a conversation with Mayor Knowles about the fact that if we need to exceed that million uh, gallons, uh, mm -hmm. would the city consider that? And I know uh, Jim Willett has reached out to the new utility guy at the city, and they're working on uh, that possibility so that if we would need more than the additional half a million, that it would be there. I think the, the resources there at Big Springs could be more than be enough to take care of the mm -hmm. issue. So, Matt Harvey. Commissioner Catlett, um, this water issue in Berkeley County with the continued growth, it's, mm -hmm. I, well, I don't see any slowdown in a mm -hmm. long time. Um, is this going to continuously be a problem? Well, at this point in time, they're ready to go to bid on a new plant in Lefevre Springs in the south end. They're also ready to go to bid on improvements to the Potomac River plan on the north end of the county. And the money's in place through revenue bonds and money's from the state to, to, to take on these projects. Uh, it's going to take, though, probably about three years by the time you bid the thing and get it constructed and finished and in use. Uh, but at the same time, they're, they're, that, that'll, that, when those projects are finished, we're going to more than double the amount of water that we can treat each day from 6 million gallons a day now to as much as 12 to 14 million. So I think that will uh, take care of it in the future for sure. But in the meantime, we're going to have to, uh, you know, just work with the situation at hand and uh, make the best of it. So, And if we have to buy more water from the city, then we do so. so. And I saw a recent economic development announcement for Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts on that one? If you're talking about the uh, one with the manufacturing of uh, decomposable uh, trays and things, it's a, a wonderful thing. It's actually going in one of the warehouses down at the Tabor Station area. And so instead of being a warehouse, it's going to be a manufacturing. And they're going to rent half the facility and probably in the future will expand to rent the whole entire warehouse for manufacturing. Uh, at, at the end of the thing, uh, they, they potentially could hire 800 people, so it's a really positive thing and uh, a wonderful thing. What was the, the hook that got them into Berkeley County? Well, you know, there was a lot of work done at the state level, and of course the governor made the announcement down at the Greenbrier a few weeks ago, and so they were very involved with that. And Jim Lindsenmeyer, that works for the development office, uh, was very involved. Uh, Jennifer Smith at our local development office, and they did a nice job of recruiting these people. 
they didn't ask for any tax breaks or anything, uh, which is wonderful. And they're coming in and they're going to be a great partner. And I think they'll be a great business for us. So really excited about it. Very, very, very much so. Mr. Doyle. Oh, yes. Do you have a question for Mr. Kent? I actually, no. I, 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 I had not. Why, I did, do if you did, don't. Well, but then why don't you ask yours? <laughs> I'm going to do that. Steve, what's on your agenda for the meeting today? Today? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, we have a, a, a lot of things on the meeting, but uh, obviously we have a public hearing today on the, on the TIF uh, mm -hmm. districts. Uh, we, we have uh, the development authority has asked the development office, which it has to be uh, approved through to uh, create two TIFs in Berkeley County, North and South End. And uh, it's something new for us. Uh, it'd take a whole show to talk about it, mm -hmm. but uh, we think it's going to be a positive thing. Can you give us the concept of it? Well, TIF stands for Tax in Incremental Financing. Mm -hmm. And the thought is you, you, you put in a TIF district land now that's undeveloped and unused, and once it's developed, if it's in an area that we think will be developed, uh, then you can take those tax resources and finance some projects for local. And like at the north end, the project in, in mine is a public safety building. We, we need a new fire station in Bennington. Mm -hmm. But we like to, instead of just making it a fire station, make it an ambulance as well, and also maybe a substation for the sheriff's department. So it would be an entire public safety building. And hopefully that could be financed through this TIF on the north end. So. Mr. Doyle, it looks like you now have a question. I do now have a question, thanks to the question you ask and, and the answer <laughs> Steve Catliff gave. Um, Steve, I think it's important to, to point out to a lot of people confuse uh, tax increment financing, the mm -hmm. TIF, with pilot programs. Mm -hmm. And while the net result is somewhat similar, mm -hmm. they behave in very different ways. Right. Yeah, and, and I personally th uh, uh, am supportive of a lot of TIFs. Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of the pilot, but I've always right. been supportive of the idea of the TIF because it, the difference is with the TIF, you do collect the taxes. And then it, right. it is, that's, is that's the government correct. that says, okay, here is how the taxes are going to be used. And they have to be used in the area where the where development the, is happening. But, right. it, but it, it, they can also use to benefit other people and businesses who are in that area. Correct. And, yeah. I, and I agree with you 100%, John. I'd rather see that than pilots. I, yeah. I absolutely agree. The other thing is, is that, um, you know, um, as we grow, uh, it, it kind of protects some land, too. That we, we keep it maybe more industrial and commercial instead of more houses and townhouses, if I may say. And I think that's a positive thing. Um, Steve, uh, where I live in, uh, in Frederick County, Maryland, uh, TIFs have been used in the past for a variety of reasons. One, I think, was mm -hmm. to help construct a highway ramp for a development that was going up. And the complaints about the TIF in that situation was that it was going to be depriving money to the school district. While well, they were encouraging growth uh, and all the houses moved in, it was actually going to deprive the school district of money uh, for when those kids who move into that development were about to be school ready. Does that happen right. in this that, situation? That's not going to happen here in Berkeley County. No, there's, the school money is going to be protected, and they're still going to get their money. So it's just going to involve the money that comes to the county at this mm -hmm. point. If, if, and, if, and we made that clear from the beginning. So we, yeah. And if they took money from the schools to do that, Rob, it violates the definition of tax increment financing. It's only the additional taxes mm -hmm. that result from the change in the use of the property mm -hmm. that is supposed to be used in that additional infrastructure and that sort of thing. So, you, no, it's the, and, if it's done right, it doesn't take a penny from any entity that is now getting money from the government. It yeah. only affect the county portion of those taxes. Right. And, you know, there's two kinds of TIFs, Rob, and, and uh, there's property TIF, which this property tax TIF, which is, ours are going to be, but then there's also a sales tax TIF. Mm -hmm. And so now to do a sales tax TIF, it could be maybe more beneficial, but you have to have an investment of $75 million. So it would take like a, a Costco or a bass fishing place or something to come in that could generate that kind of revenue where you could then create a sales tax tip. And, and with the sales tax tip, you're actually taking money from state government or that there would have go. gone to yeah. state government. Which I kind of like that part. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> they need to give us back more. So. Speaking of Costco, have there been any overtures about a Costco in the Eastern I, Panhandle? I, I just threw that out. Of, <laughs> it would be nice, though, wouldn't it? I'd eaten something last night from Costco. That's what made me think of that. So, But it came from Winchester. So. Oh, yeah? What did you have? Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> no, it was actually sure, uh, chicken chur? salad and potato salad from Costco. <laughs> oh, okay, so. that'll work. Hey, <laughs> I, I want to talk about the Labor Day breakfast. Yeah, it went great. Uh, 
you know, it was the best breakfast we've had since COVID. Mm -hmm. now, of course, the best breakfast we had was 2020 COVID when we didn't have a breakfast. Because of WR and R and y'all's efforts, we raised $20,000 that year with no expenses. That <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> hey. you know, and, and we didn't have to do all that work. Yeah, so, and maybe so, that's the way to go. Sit there and collect a check. So, uh, but, but since then, it was the best breakfast we had. I can't think enough. All the volunteers are there. Faith Christian Academy has been coming for several years with all the kids. Uh, a lot of a lot of elected people officials in fact uh, uh morrissey was there um and uh, a lot of people uh, parks and rec had a, a lot of staff members there but a lot of it takes about 40 50 volunteers to pull that off every year mm -hmm. and i thought it went very smooth and it was great and uh we should have written net at least uh, 12 to fifteen thousand off the breakfast so that's and, great and all that money goes back into war memorial park so Right, and that breakfast is the, specifically the breakfast for is still, memorial park. yeah it's still sponsored by the war memorial park association right which is a uh, nonprofit that our only purpose is to raise funds for that particular park. And uh, I still serve on that park foundation. Buzz takes care of the tickets and I take care of all the other stuff, the food the preparation, the cooking, everything, the clean up, set up. So, uh, but it, we couldn't do it without all the people that come out on a holiday morning early and give their time and we appreciate it greatly. And to all the people that purchase tickets, obviously. we I think the numbers was, you know, back in the day, in the early 90s and stuff, we were hitting over 500. Right. One year, we almost hit, hit 600 people. And, and we, we, we didn't think we were going to get them all fed at one point. But uh, but now, you know, since since COVID in, in the last decade or so, it's been, we tried to hit 400. Well, we hit about 430, I think, in ticket sales this year, which was really good. That's so, great. Especially uh, at, what, 30, 35 bucks a pop? $30 right now. 35 at the door if you mm -hmm. don't have advanced tickets. And, of course, uh, one of the things that's helped, I think, we let the kids come and eat for free now. And we have hot cakes for those. We had the sheriff cooking hot cakes. And he said, how can I help? I said, can you cook a hot cake? He said, I never have. I said, you need to learn right now. So I said, <laughs> did he burn a few? <laughs> he did at first, but he got better as the day went on. So uh, yeah, You know what? That, you just call that some type of give it a French name and black and... Uh you know, Cajun style pancakes there or something like that, right? There you go. Yeah. Hey, I want to circle back to Lambert, Steve, because of your time at Lam at uh, Parks and Rec and dealing with the water situations at Lambert. Because my understanding is, uh, you took a little heat last night. I don't think you were there last night, but I was not. Eddie was there representing right. us last Eddie night. Eddie may have I told had you other obligations. I haven't talked with Eddie yet. We're going to speak today, of course. I understand you took a little heat because of Lambert Park, and uh, one of the uh, complaints was that you you had tried to close Lambert Park for the last eight years and i want to give you a chance to address that right. because you and i have had many interviews about the water issues at lambert park the leaks the water table mm -hmm. the soil over the years as to what the problems were well you know what the, the board decided several years back that there was not enough public admission uh clientele to keep two pools open for public hours we weren't going to close lambert park we were going to only have public hours at war memorial use lambert for the swim team for senior swim for private rentals and things like that to keep it going. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the, the thought of the board at that time. And uh, the city came at that time and said, because at that time the, the pool was losing money, obviously. And but water, the, if I and, remember. And, well, what, we got that part corrected, but we were losing revenues. So the city came in and said, hey, we'll subsidize the difference to keep it open for public hours as well. And so the issue was resolved easily. And they've been subsidizing it for the last decade ever since keep mm -hmm. it open so that offset the loss so very good any final questions for commissioner steve catlett mr harvey i want to congratulate matt on his appointment to the first foundation i think it's wonderful and uh we really look forward to some really wonderful positive things from that foundation to help not just our part of the state but the entire state of west virginia so i appreciate you being willing to serve in that capacity thank you well i appreciate your support commissioner yes sir john I, too, Good. would like to congratulate Matt Harvey on that appointment. I just found out about it right before the show started. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, big news, yeah. We, we, act, we did a whole segment with Matt about that last week, I think it was. Well, I'm sorry. I missed it. It's available for replay on uh, YouTube <laughs> and Facebook. <laughs> Steve, thank you. Thank you for having me. Gentlemen, good to see you. Appreciate yeah, you coming you. in this segment of our show today.